A blessed Wednesday of Holy Week to you. I pray that God will uh, continue to richly bless you this week as we remember the events of our salvation. In that very first Wednesday of Holy Week, um, we don't know exactly what took place. Some biblical scholars believe that Jesus actually stayed in Bethany during this day. And it was on Wednesday, most likely, that he was, Jesus was anointed by Mary with that beautiful alabaster jar of perfume. This day is sometimes called Spy Wednesday because it was most likely on Wednesday that uh, Judas went to the Sanhedrin and, and leaders of the uh, uh, religious Jews to um, offer Jesus to them, uh, to betray Jesus to them, therefore called Spy Wednesday. I'd like to focus on another of Jesus' important teachings that he offered during that first Holy Week. It comes to us from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, this time in the 25th chapter. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in all his glory and all his angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. It's an interesting uh, teaching that Jesus offers during Holy Week, isn't it? Sometimes we forget that that's the context. But it is precisely in the context of Holy Week that Jesus talks about the separation of the of the sheep and the goats. In fact, much of Jesus' teaching during Holy Week is eschatological, end times in nature. You see, he's preparing for his death. He's also preparing for his resurrection and then ultimate ascension off into heaven. And so he says, those who are my followers will show love like I have shown love. They will visit the sick and the imprisoned. They will, they will clothe the naked and feed the hungry. You see, we who are in Christ, who, who follow him as Lord as well as Savior, know that part of, part of living life following Jesus is not living for self, but living for others. But I think it's interesting to note that these, uh, these folks almost didn't know that what they were doing was, was good, right? And why is that? One professor of mine back in seminary said it was simply that they did what they did because they were Christians. They didn't think of return or reward. They simply did it. They loved in Christ's name because they had been loved by Christ. 
They served in Christ's name because they had been served so well by Christ. In other words, um, as we follow Jesus, we become more like him, more loving, more servant-like in our nature. And those who um, are not followers of Jesus, the, the goats, if you will, in the story, those on the left, they, um, they also were kind of clueless. Now, it should be said that these good works did not achieve for them heaven. They were just a result of Jesus' love permeating their lives. I love what Peter later said. He said, let us do good to all people, but those, especially those who belong to the household of believers. Hmm. A couple of chapters earlier, during Holy Week again, Jesus says the following, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Indeed, we are called to live lives of love. By Thursday night, Jesus would show his disciples the full extent of his love as he bowed down and washed his disciples' feet. As he... Um, gave them the Lord's Supper to remember him by, a meal of love and a, an agape feast. That word agape, the driving force within Christianity, is never a love that is only felt. It's a love that is lived out. It's a love of servanthood. And of course, we know that by Friday, Jesus would die as the suffering servant for us all, clothing us, feeding us, visiting us in the prison of our sin, and bringing us new life. May God bless you this Holy Wednesday. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to love not just with words or with feelings, Help us to love in your name, in action, in a life lived to your glory and for the good of others. All this we pray in your name, O Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.